Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nick. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, we have my Ac 99 Acura Integra here with the K-Series. I'll just go over the car really briefly for you because if you've never been to the channel. So we have a K28-2, uh, ported RBC, uh, K2 and Ram header, um, tucked, tucked harnesses, uh, just a lot of K2 goodies, Speed Factory tucked ride, and fittings, Chase Bay's products. Um, we have some Recaro Le Mans confettis, uh, K2 and shifter, Chase and Jay's titanium shift knob, Circuit Hero strut bar, Integra type bar, rear seats I haven't installed, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. And today, we are finally going to be installing something that took an eternity to get here. One eternity later. Um, this is my tucked wiring harness. It's uh, made by Private Spec. Um, this is a Rycom, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Rycom DR25 unit, as you can see right there. And I'm going to be installing the Chase Bay's uh, mil spec. Yeah, so this has a mil spec um, plug, firewall plug. Um, I'm going to be installing the Chase Bay's firewall uh, plate first. Um, I would recommend, this, this is something that I overlooked when I was ordering a harness. Um, buy this, like you can buy anybody's uh, firewall plug, or sorry, plate, you can buy anybody's firewall plate. Um, I didn't want to go with like, I didn't want to get like a Wireworks one or like a Rywire one because I wasn't supporting those brands, so I thought it'd just be kind of weird just like to have that thrown in there, but I do have Chase Base products, so I hit them up and they had a few left just kicking around because I don't really know if they sell that anymore because uh, they used to sell wiring harnesses and stuff. So they found me one and uh, I bought that one instead. So we'll be we'll be installing this today. Hopefully everything goes well. And I plan on starting the car pretty soon. Got the K-Pro here already. So good to go with that. Charge harness that I'll probably have to fix a little bit. So like I was saying, you should definitely drill your holes first for your firewall plate before you put the engine in. It's just something I overlooked and completely forgot about until it was done. Um, so I'm going to have to drill my holes from the inside, which is going to be, I guess, a bit of a challenge. Because it's going to be hard for me to tell if it's, uh, if it's level, right? Or if it's equal on both sides. So I'm really praying that I get it correct and uh, it doesn't turn out like a pile of crap. <laughs> So there's the Chase Base Firewall uh, mil spec uh, plate. Um, yeah, it was not bad. I just put it inside, roughly eyeballed it, and then drilled the four holes, and uh, I was able to install it by myself. It's relatively centered. Like, that's pretty centered. I don't think anybody's really gonna notice if it's slightly off. I think I did pretty good. So I cleared some stuff up. I do not need this k -Tune conversion harness anymore. Uh, the private spec one just plugs and plays, uh, there's less stuff on it, and then I just have to tap some wires in, which I'll be doing later once I get the diagram for it. Yeah, so I'm just going to disconnect it, then this will literally just go and plug into the C101 on the driver's side. Um, it looks like this, basically, on the other side. And, uh, yeah. Alright, essentially I have my K-Pro. Uh, bolt it up where I'm going to put it, just the factory location, so you can bolt it up with the two bottom tabs. And then the engine harness uh, comes in. I have it plugged in. Then we have our conversion uh, that goes from here to here. So this is where I'm going to start splicing wires. There's a bunch of extra wires here off of the uh, connector for the conversion harness. Um, and essentially you just need to splice into this uh, factory chassis harness. Um, so I have a diagram. I'm not going to show this step by step because the problem is I am OBD2A. You might be OBD1 or OBD2B. Um, so I don't want to start giving the wrong uh, instruction. So that'll be something you'd have to figure out. Um, but essentially all I'm going to be running is like the fuel pump, check engine light, uh, maybe the wideband, but 
Um, like there's a few wires on here that's for the AC which I have zip tied here. I don't have AC so these two wires useless to me so I don't have to worry about those. Um, but yeah so I'm just going to splice into uh, the factory harness here and pretty much it. The other videos I had told you guys that I, the harness maker told me to pin uh, the wideband to the ELD off of the harness. Well the tuner told me take that off, plug in uh, your analog uh, harness into the Capro and then run your wideband off that. Uh, it's a more accurate reading and then you can enable um, lean protection. Um, so I'll kind of So when you actually take the cover off the uh, Capro, you'll notice that there's these two slots here that you know you can put stuff on. Um, this is your digital uh, digital output or input, um, and then this is your analog. So we're going to be using the analog for the wideband, and he told me that uh, in the Capro, the calibration he sent me, he has set up. Uh, my wideband to read off analog zero, which is the first red wire here. Um, now, if you have a Capro 3, I think the wires might be a slightly different color. Um, and then essentially, you have to ground the two blacks. They, they're both marked ground clearly on this side. If you apply power to these, these two ground wires, you will damage this. So, make note of that. So, <clears throat> conveniently, there's like this little slot here where you can run the wires out which is nice and then you put the cover back on the wires won't fall out um, I've gone ahead and just taped them or uh, zip tied the wires that I'm not going to be using up here um, just in case I do want to add other analog uh, inputs I guess um, so yeah that's what we're going to be doing I'm going to close this back up and then I'm going to wire the uh, red wire to my wideband which is going to be the white wire um, and then just ground these uh, you're going to want to ground the the two black wires uh, close to your wideband ground so that the voltage offset uh, coming into the ECU is relatively low, um, which means you won't have to, whatever the gauge is reading versus the Capro, it won't be that much of a difference. You might have to just tweak it a little bit. All right, so I got the panel back on. Um, I took the, I disconnected the power first before I even started doing any of this wiring. Um, so yeah, the two, the grounds from the ECU are going to, uh, this bolt hole here, and then the ground from the wideband is also going there, so that, uh, the voltage offset hopefully will not be too bad, and I might have to adjust it slightly. I wish this was a little bit longer so I could tuck it under here, but it's not, so that's, that's gonna have to be, I guess.